What's clear with globalization is that um, companies see tremendous opportunity abroad and they're going there. Whether we like it or not, the growth is overseas and companies are going there. As they move there, as they, as they move their manufacturing there, they're finding it more and more lucrative to, to outsource research and development and they're going to be moving R&D over there. Now, we don't know if the trend is good or bad for the USA, but what we do know is that at stake is our standard of living and world economic leadership. I'll, I'll make another provocative statement over here, that what's happening is as significant as the Industrial Revolution, only it's happening 10 times faster. And we don't understand what's happening. Academics don't even understand what's happening. Political leaders, Department of Education, you, I mean, National Academies, you name it, uh, everyone has an answer to globalization. They, they absolutely know what we need to do. That we need to improve K-12 education, we need to teach our kids more math and science uh, to, stay, to stay competitive globally. We need to graduate more engineers and scientists. We need to have more H-1B visas. And we need to expand the investment in basic research. I don't think anyone in this room will disagree with these prescriptions. But the question is, what, what diseases, diseases are, are they remedying? And that's what the problem is. That when I start looking behind the, the, the data and trying to understand what the hell is going on, <laughs> everywhere I looked, it was surprise after surprise after surprise. Start with the most basic issue about graduating more engineers and scientists. We seem to take it for granted that if we have more engineers and scientists, we'll become more competitive, and that that's the key to maintaining our edge. And the justification for that is that China graduated 600,000, India graduated 350, we only graduate 70,000, therefore we're in trouble. And then we keep talking about the fact that our kids rank below uh, average interna international test scores. There was just a press release by uh, the PISA people last week who said the same thing. And then my tech friends keep talking about the fact that they're going abroad because they can't find the talent in the USA. Therefore, the assertion is that because Microsoft is setting up operations in China and in Bangalore, uh, they're doing it because there's a deficiency in, in, um, in the graduates of American universities and something wrong with the US workforce. And what's more, uh, it goes back to our teachers who don't teach enough math and science, that they're not well educated themselves, therefore they don't impart a sense of math and science. These are the common prescriptions, and I think everyone will agree that uh, these are what, uh, you know, but everyone keeps saying and this is what we seem to accept. We found was that those numbers are totally bogus. <laughs> that we weren't comparing apples to apples. What we were doing was that we were comparing 70,000 accredited engineers from uh, US universities with uh, what are called short cycle degrees in China and two-year diplomas, CS and IT majors in India. What's more, in China, uh, those degrees could be anything which includes engineering in, uh, in the title. So a motor mechanic could be called an engineer. An HVAC technician could be called an engineer. Anyone that wants to call anything, any degree an engineer, was counted in the numbers that China was putting out. What we found was that we weren't comparing apples to apples, that this was absolute garbage that was being uh, bandied about everyone. The real numbers look closer to this, that uh, in 2004, uh, the US and India graduated roughly the same number of engineers, if you count computer, sci computer science and IT people as engineers. The quality is not comparable, that uh, we're not comparing uh, uh, you know, four-year accredited degrees even in these numbers, that the quality out of India and China is awful. The vast majority of graduates in both countries are unemployable by multinationals. So we decided to do follow-up research. We actually. Uh, uh, you know, we went to the source here, we went to the Lou Dobbs list of companies who are exporting America, and we decided to survey them, and guess what we learned? First of all, on the question of shortages of engineers, we keep hearing, you know, Bill Gates and all my, you know, all the tech world talking about the shortage of engineers. We didn't ask them the typical question that academics would ask them, saying, is there, is there a shortage of engineers? We asked them in a different way. I mean, again, um, when uh, you hire, you know, again, I used to be a tech CEO. When you hire people, you typically make uh, offers to multiple people, and not everyone accepts your job. If you're looking for a job, you typically go to multiple, um, you apply at multiple places, and if you're you know, decent, and if, if there is demand, you typically get more than one offer. You typically get two or three or four offers over a period of time. So therefore, about a 50% acceptance rate is pretty good. And also what happens in the tech world is that when there's shortages, you start offering bonuses. During the dot-com days, I was offering programmers $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 bonuses. I was offering senior executives $100,000, $150,000 bonuses. We would spend mega bucks on recruiting people. Okay. We asked about bonuses. We asked how long it takes to fill a position. If you fill a position within three or four months, that's darn good. Look at the responses. <laughs> By every indication, there's no indication of a shortage. Uh, there's no sign of a shortage in the USA of engineers. Next question, where are the shortages? If you looked at the chart I had put up before, 
China should have had an abundance of engineers. India should have had severe shortages. And the USA should have been somewhere uh, in between. It was the exact opposite, that India was at the top of the list and China was at the bottom. So this government propaganda I talked about, it didn't add up. We asked, about the, we asked them to compare the skills of Indian workers versus Chinese and, 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 and I'm sorry, US workers versus Chinese and Indians. And guess what? In every way, Americans were better or equal to foreign workers. And this wasn't even a, uh, there wasn't even a doubt about this. In almost every perspective, Americans were better. Plus, they, they uh, understood the industry. They had good business acumen. You know, the, the, there were no cultural issues and so on and so on. The bottom line was that Indian and the Chinese were cheaper and worked harder. This shouldn't be a surprise, but you know, we were battling propaganda being put out by American companies that kept talking about uh, skills not being in the US, there being something wrong with American education, our uh, you know, kindergartens not teaching enough mathematics and all this other crap. So basically, we had to come to the bottom of it. And the bottom line was, there's nothing wrong with American workers. They're the best in the world by far. Not by a little, by a lot. What we learned was that uh, these multinationals, when they went to India and China, really didn't care that much about degrees that they would hire anyone that they could find and train them up themselves. Bottom line was that in India and China, companies, the multinationals are teaching the employees what they need and they'll do, take any ed education they can get. It doesn't matter that the, uh, the entire education system of India and China is garbage and th that the graduates that they produce are very weak. American companies will train them up because they're so cheap. I just got back from China and before that I was in India. Despite everything I said, here's what's happening in India that it's racing ahead to become a major innovator in R&D. This absolutely astonished me when I went there a few months ago. We looked at several industries, pharmaceutical. Who would expect uh, a third world country like India to be leading in drug discovery, specialty pharmaceuticals, biologics, I mean, uh, designing different types of generics and so on and so on. But they're doing that in India. In aerospace, the next generation Boeings and Airbuses, everything from the in-flight entertainment systems to the seats, to the first class cabins, to the collision avoidance systems, to fuel inverting controls, to God knows what else is being done in India right now. Consumer appliances, in a country that doesn't even have washing machines, they design, both GE and Whirlpool are designing the next generations of washers, dryers, and refrigerators in India right now. This is, uh, this is absolutely mind blowing. China basically um, started off with manufacturing. Um, virtually everything you f buy in the US is made in China right now. What they're doing is that they're desperate to move up the, the ladder in R&D. And they're now coercing American companies to locate their R&D there. Basically, the bottom line is that if American companies are going to manufacture there, they, they better move R&D there. And um, they're doing everything they can to the extent of funding massive R&D efforts, everything they can to increase R&D. In the Silicon Valley, more than half the companies were founded by immigrants. This is absolutely mind blowing. The revenue in 2005 was $52 billion, if, uh, and they em employed 450,000 people. If you added up all the engineers and scientists we've imported over this time period, you'll find that these companies that they started created more jobs by far than the number of immigrants we let into the country. You folks typically talk about uh, USPTO patents. There's a global database called WIPO, the World International Property Organization. That's where you go if you, if you want to compete globally, and that's where the global patents are. We decided to look into that to see who was doing what f uh, from the USA. The fact is that the number of patents being filed by foreign nationals residing in the USA increased from 7.6% in 1998 to 25.6% in 2006. Well, this is amazing that a quarter of all the global patents from the USA are being filed by foreign nationals. In the queue right now for green cards, there are about a million immigrants and their families skilled immigrants and their families who are here legally working for American companies, high, typically highly educated, doing everything by the book. We're not talking about uh, people who jumped over the border here. We're talking about people who came here on student visas, on uh, you know, temporary worker visas, who came here legally and properly through the front door. There are millions of them waiting for green cards. Okay. The problem is that we only admit 120,000 per year, roughly, in the three main employment categories in which these people would file. The largest numbers are from India and China. In, in this backlog. And the, there's a per country limit of 7%. In other words, there are about um, a third of a million Indians and their families waiting for green cards, working for American companies. We can only convert 8,400 of them, them to uh, immigrants per year. So, so all of these people who are opposed to immigration, skilled immigrants in particular, they're their own worst enemies. Because what they're going to do is that they're going to take uh, 
hundreds of thousands of very highly educated, skilled uh, immigrants who could be starting companies and contributing to the U.S. economy and sending them back to compete with us. 